Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 11 Yanks Breakdown. I'm Pete Douthit, and today I am trying to do the controversial, the ill-advised, and maybe the impossible. I am trying to predict the USMNT 2022 World Cup roster. Now, trying to predict this roster two years in advance is difficult for any nation, but it's especially difficult for the U.S. because right now we're in the middle of this generational shift where we have a lot of these really talented young guys coming through. And when you're very young and you're just bursting onto the scene, one or two years is massive in terms of your development. Case in point, a year ago, Christian Pulisic was still trying to find his feet at Chelsea. Weston McKennie was playing all over the field for a terrible Schalke team. Serginho Dest had just broken through at Ajax and was trying to decide if he wanted to play for the US or Holland. Tyler Adams was still injured for RB Leipzig and Gio Reyna was playing for Dortmund's under 19s. Contrast that with a year later and that should tell you how much has changed in one year. So if we project two years from now, it's very hard to say how different it's gonna be, not only for our young players in Europe, but some of our young players in MLS who will probably be making that graduation over to Europe. That being said, projecting into the future and dreaming about possibilities is all part and parcel of being a USMNT fan, so we're gonna give it a shot. But before we do, if you're new to this channel, welcome. We got new USMNT videos every Tuesday. Smash that subscribe button. If you're already subscribed, smash that like button. It helps people to find us. Here we go. Okay, so starting with goalkeepers, Zach Steffen, Matt Turner, and Sean Johnson. This one is really not that hard. We don't have a lot of strong goalkeepers that are really challenging Zach Steffen for a place. I know a lot of people are very high on Matt Turner. I'm very high on him too. He's a good shot stopper. I'd like to see him do it more for a greater amount of time before I crown him as a challenger or contender for the number one. Sean Johnson is the elder statesman in this group. He's the opposite of Matt Turner. Uh, not as good a shot stopper as Matt Turner, but very good with his feet. He's got experience. The other guy that I think is in contention for this list is Ethan Horvath. Now, I don't have him on the final three because he's not playing. I really thought he was going to leave Bruges this summer and go somewhere else where he could be a number one, but he's not playing at all. He's sitting behind Simon Mignolet. He's going to have to leave if he wants to get playing time, if he wants to be considered to be a USMNT goalkeeper. Now, his contract does expire next summer, so he could make a last minute push, join a team, play real well for a year and a half, and maybe Greg Berhalter calls him in. But if I had to put money on it, these are the three that I'm going with. Fullbacks, very exciting here. We got Serginho Des, Reggie Cannon, Anthony Robinson, and Kobe Hernandez Foster. Some people might wonder why DeAndre Yedlin is on this list. I don't rate DeAndre Yedlin as highly. I think he's very quick, but he lacks technique. And for a team that's trying to build out of the back, his technical ability is just not up to snuff. Kobe Hernandez Foster is the surprise here, but maybe not if you've been following him in the youth ranks. He has all of the talent, ability, and tools to be a top 10 left back in the world. The problem with him is that he plays for Wolfsburg, who are notoriously bad at giving an opportunity to young players. So there's a good chance he may not even make his debut before Qatar 2022, and maybe somebody else comes in. There are a bunch of young left backs, both in MLS and abroad. There's Sam Vines and George Bello, who are currently in MLS. Jonathan Gomez in USL, another top prospect. Abroad, we've got Chris Gloucester. We've got Travian Souza, who actually just had his contract canceled by Hamburg. Chris Gloucester hasn't even really broken through as a full-time starter for PSV's second team in the Dutch second division, and he's almost 21. Tim Ream can play as a left back, but when you're going up against the top wingers in the world, I don't want a 35-year-old Tim Ream playing there. There's also a chance somebody like Julian Araujo could go as another right back and have Serginho Dest be the backup left back to Anthony Robinson. So if something happens to Anthony, Serginho switches from right to left. But keep your eyes on Kobe Hernandez Foster. He is the Marcelo of American left backs. Center backs, John Anthony Brooks, one of the few guys on this roster that has actually played at a World Cup. So he's gonna be a big leader for this squad, lock starter. Chris Richards, who is just starting to break through for Bayern, will almost certainly be there. Mark McKenzie has had a quietly very, very good season. Mark McKenzie is one of those guys who really can do it all. He's athletic, he's intelligent, he can play with both feet which means that he can play either right or left center back. And the last one is Matt Miazga. There's question marks over Matt Miazga. He's been a journeyman. His development has kind of stalled over the last few years. He's now moved to Anderlecht. Uh, a lot of people are going to ask why Aaron Long isn't here. 
Long is not playing very well for the Red Bulls right now. If you're not even performing at a very high level in MLS, I don't think you should be considered for the national team. Some other guys to keep an eye on. Tim Ream is going to be 35 years old and is already on the decline. I don't see him going. Some people really like Cameron Carter Vickers. I don't personally rate him that highly. Eric Palmer Brown is another guy that could be on this roster. He's been very impressive in Austria. He does, however, need to play up a level and just sort of test himself against some better opposition. So I know a lot of people are very high on him. I'm going to pump the brakes on that until I see him at a higher level. Matt Miazga can also play with his feet, which is why I think he ends up on this roster. Not to mention he'll be one of the more experienced guys. This is a very young team. So a guy like Matt Miazga can bring some experience and some of that fighting mentality that the US MNT really needs. Midfielders. Okay, so Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, and Gio Reyna, if healthy, will be on that plane to Qatar. Now, the other three, there's question marks around all of them. Brendan Aronson seems to be on an upward trajectory, really improved a lot this season, uh, is going to RB Salzburg, I believe, in January. I have question marks about Aronson. For a 10, he doesn't find space that well. If he can improve this side of his game, then yeah, I can see him being a top midfielder. And I think going to Salzburg in Austria will help him with that. Paxton Palmacall is, for me, the most complete American midfielder in MLS. He can play at the 6, he can play at the 8, he can play at the 10. He doesn't get a lot of love because he's been injured so much. So we have to see if he can remain healthy. But if he can, I promise you he's going to be on that plane to Qatar. Johnny Cordoso is a guy who's recently come to light playing in the Brazilian league. I've never seen him play, and I usually don't comment on guys that I have never seen play, but Greg Berhalter seems to be very high on him. He was supposedly going to call him up for the March friendlies. Apparently, people who I trust have watched him play and say he's really, really good. He's a very combative midfielder, a lot like Tyler Adams. Maybe Greg Berhalter wants somebody who offers something a little bit different, like a Jackson Ewell or a Chris Durkin. Sebastian Legette is another guy that people will have questions about. I really like Sebastian. I think he should still be involved with the USMNT and contribute for qualifying, but I have question marks about his ability to be effective against top, top opponents in the world. Caden Clark, who is just starting to impress in MLS, is supposedly going to RB Leipzig in January of 2022. There are a lot of question marks in this midfield. It's very young, but it's very athletic, it's very technical, and it's very driven. Forwards, and this one was really tough to do. Christian Pulisic, Josh Sargent, Jordan Morris, Timmy Weah, Uli Yanez, and Jassi Zardes. Now, before everybody freaks out, I don't think Jassi is going to be effective against the world's top opponent. He can score goals against the lower CONCACAF teams, but the minute the level jumps up, Jossi is going to struggle. So why is he on here? Well, Greg Berhalter really trusts him a lot. He likes the way he moves off the ball. He likes his finishing. He's supposedly a great locker room guy, a leader. And also, we don't really have a lot of challengers at center forward. Josie is going to be 33. He continues to be injured and unfit 95% of the time. So I don't think he ends up in Qatar. There's question marks about Io Akinola. Is he going to play for the U.S.? Is he going to play for Canada? There's Daryl D.K. Could be somebody down the line, maybe. Sebastian Soto is somebody I hope can really come good. But it's very hard to say. I mean, two years is a long time. But also, two years ago, it felt like we were at the exact same place that we are now as far as our center forwards. I think Jossie ends up going to Qatar, but nothing would make me happier than for another young forward to really show what he can do in the next two years and knock Jossie out of this team. Timmy Weah offers you a lot. He can play on both wings. He can play as a center forward. He can play as a 10. Jordan Morris, a lot of people hate on him because he chose to stay in Seattle. But Jordan Morris has really made efforts to improve over the last few years. His movement off the ball, his left foot, his combination play in tight spaces. I think he still has a lot to offer this team. And if he keeps up the trajectory he's on, whether he ends up going to Europe or not, I think Jordan Morris makes the Qatar roster. Uli Yanez, I really like a lot. Watch him at Here in Veen this season. He has a very high ceiling, and all he needs is the opportunity to show it. Explosive, technical, good 1v1, driven, hungry. So these are the forwards that I think end up going to Qatar. Now, I think an issue that people are going to have with this roster is that it's very young and very inexperienced, and I understand that. Generally speaking, you want to have a good blend of youth and experience when going into a World Cup. The problem is that the U.S. has had this missing generation of players, 
So all of our really good guys are very, very young, and our experienced guys are either aging out or are no longer up to the standard required to play against some of the best opposition in the world. Guys like that were good at one point, but they're in decline right now. And two years from now, that decline is gonna be even more pronounced. At some point, we have to admit that our best talent is under the age of 25, and we have to give them the opportunity and say, look, we believe in you guys, go out there and do your best. The other thing to think about is that there is some experience in this roster. Sean Johnson, John Anthony Brooks, Matt Miazga, Christian Pulisic, Weston McKinney, Jordan Morris, Guys like that are gonna be able to bring leadership and experience that is important for this group. Also, while a lot of these guys may not have a lot of international experience at big international tournaments, they're playing for some of the top clubs in the world. Juventus, Barcelona, Chelsea, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund. So yeah, maybe they don't have a ton of international experience, but the experience of playing in the Champions League or in one of the top five leagues in the world and competing week in and week out against the best players in the world and with some of the best players in the world is going to give them a lot of experience when they come into an international team. And I don't think they're gonna be scared of the glare or the bright lights of a World Cup. And finally, may I remind you that we had a very experienced squad that was supposed to qualify for 2018 and all the experience in the world couldn't even get us out of CONCACAF qualifying. Ultimately, I don't believe you sacrifice actual quality for experience. And a lot of our quality comes from the guys who are under 25 and younger. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Leave your thoughts in the comments. I want to hear what you think about this roster. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you next Tuesday.